My name is Mary Ann Tucci. I'm with the Building Science Group in the Department of Civil Engineering. Um, so there's three main components to my thesis. Um, the first of which is looking at the population of MERBs, or multi-unit residential buildings in Toronto, basically to establish what the status quo is. Um, the second part is to delve into a little bit more detail and look at an actual occupied MERB to really understand the energy use behavior of the occupants in a building. And then the third part is really to um, develop a retrofit strategy that sort of goes beyond anything that's been done within the industry thus far. So the first part of my work involved trying to figure out what was happening in the current MERB population. And so our investigation was really to figure out which buildings were using the most energy and which should we be targeting for energy retrofits. So in order to do that, we tried to gather as many buildings as possible from various different existing databases to build on the work of others. Um, and these databases involved um, energy use, but also building characteristics like window size, building height, um, the type of building envelope. And when you correlate the two, so the energy use against different building characteristics, we were trying to find what characteristics defined a highly energy intensive building. What was interesting is we found that um, larger the window to wall ratio was probably the biggest factor affecting the energy intensity of buildings, which was very highly relevant to what I was looking at with um, older multi-unit residential buildings but is incredibly important when we look at all of the new buildings that are currently being built in the city um, because the window to wall ratio is often 100%. You've got all glazing. The second part of my thesis involved um, some detailed monitoring of an actual occupied building. Uh, we were very fortunate to use the Student Family Housing Building at 35 Charles Street, uh, which is owned by the university, and they agreed to let us go in there and put monitors all over their building. Um, so the technology that we used um, was, was really interesting. It was a, basically a wi little wireless transmitter um, that collects temperature and relative humidity data. And then we could also customize each sensor by plugging in a LUX sensor to read daylight, um, a, a displacement sensor so we could see when the windows and doors were open and closed a differential pressure sensor so we could look at how effective the exhaust fans were in the building. And so each of the suites had a collection of these. There were about half a dozen in each suite and they would monitor all of these various things. And then because it was wireless technology, we didn't have to go into the suites all the time and collect the data. We could simply leave these in the suites for a year. People would go about their business as they always have. and then, But we could actually see what was happening while they were um, while they were going about their daily life. <laughs> so the third part of my thesis involved developing a retrofit strategy for these buildings where we could try to reduce the energy it required to heat and cool these buildings. So we used the climate simulator uh, which is in the building science lab at the University of Toronto and it's essentially two side-by-side -side rooms. So we've got one room that's kept at room temperature and one room that we can pretend is the outside and adjust to whatever temperature we want. So we can get that right down to about minus 40 degrees C. So let's go and take a look at the apartment construction in the warm room and then I'll show you the balcony space. So air source heat pumps are a great way of providing sweet based control to the tenants. However, air source heat pumps don't work very well in cold regions because their efficiency drops dramatically. So that's why they're not typically used in an environment like Toronto. But what we proposed was to put the outdoor unit of this heat pump into an enclosed balcony space. And what that does is it creates a warmer zone in which that compressor for the heat pump can operate, which thereby increases the efficiency of the system. So now I'll take you over to the balcony space and we can see the other half of this unit, the outdoor unit. So as I mentioned, typically air source heat pump compressors will operate in the outside of the building. Um, but with cold temperature climates, heat pumps aren't as efficient. So what we thought was to bring that outdoor unit inside of an enclosed balcony space, which are typically underutilized in this type of building. So what we did was create our own enclosed balcony space within the cold room and we placed the compressor unit just within this enclosed space. 
So with the compressor unit within that enclosed space, what that unit is doing is pumping heat from a much warmer space rather than the outside because the apartment is constantly losing heat into that balcony space. So there we improve the efficiency of the air source heat pump. Apartment buildings are a really important part of Toronto's housing. They provide over 50% of our dwelling space. And so a lot of people call these buildings home. But a lot of them have started to deteriorate. Most of them were built in the 1960s and the 1970s. And as these buildings deteriorate, they are less energy efficient and less comfortable for the tenants. So to me, this was a huge opportunity to work on a problem that touches many people who live in the city of Toronto. Not only to make their buildings more comfortable and um, pleasant to, to live in, but also to reduce their impact on the environment because of the sheer number and energy intensity of these buildings.